Hello, I'm Karen Whiting and I'm happy to have you in my kitchen today as I make some whole wheat bread and use the same recipe to make some whole wheat cinnamon rolls. The bread recipe is in my book, Nature Girl, because that book, although it talks about having fun outdoors and taking care of God's creation, it also talks about healthy eating, the food we grow, and what we do with it once we bring it into the kitchen. So the first step in making our bread is to have our yeast. And when I talk about yeast, I always think of that as the if we have the drama of our bread making, yeast is the prima donna. And yeast doesn't like a draft, likes the water temperature just right. Too hot can actually kill the yeast. And we put it in a cup of water and let it sit for 10 full minutes. All right, so while this yeast is just dissolving, and it takes that long to dissolve, I prepare my other ingredients. So I have to take milk, and I'm using 2%. You can use whole milk, skim milk, whatever you want. I've even used dried milk with water. And put that in the microwave. We want to scald the milk. We're going to use three eggs in this recipe. And I want to take them and break the yolks and start mixing them up before everything goes together. Gives a better consistency for it. Next, I need a quarter of a cup of oil and a quarter of a cup of honey. Now, one good trick is if you measure your oil first, then when you put the honey in, it's not going to stick to that cup. I'm not going to pour it into this little bowl, I'm going to wait till the 10 minutes are up and put it in the larger bowl. That Otherwise it would stick to the large measuring cup even with some oil in there. All right. I must talk a little bit about why I'm using these ingredients. The eggs enrich a bread. It also keeps the crumbs tender so that the bread won't go stale too quickly. You have your French breads and a lot of Cuban breads and things that do not use eggs and those start to go stale almost as soon as they come out of the oven and they're to be eaten quicker. With this type of bread I can keep it for a couple of days, a week, I can freeze it very easily. Now I have also measured out six cups of flour and flour is the hero of the drama in the kitchen. That gives the body the fullness, the structure to the bread. Let me take out the milk. The milk and the water, the liquids, are what give steam to the entire drama because inside the oven, when the bread is baking, the steam as it releases is the other acting power that keeps that bread rising up so that it will become a nice full loaf and not a flat bread <laughs> and not a dense bread. It's going to give it moisture also. And the oil in particular is another thing that makes it tender and gives it moisture. Uh, the oil helps to tenderize the crumbs so that you don't have that harder type of a dough. And I think we have all our ingredients, so let me just repeat what we're actually using in this recipe. I have one package of yeast with one cup of warm water dissolving for 10 minutes. I have one cup of milk, which I have scalded in the microwave for a minute and a half. I have three eggs, one quarter cup of oil, one quarter cup of honey, six cups of wheat. Now you can add salt, and my recipe does call for a couple teaspoons of salt. I don't always add that in. I grew up with a grandfather who couldn't have salt and I was just used to not putting it in. If you're going to have that bread around longer, and normally when I make the bread it's eaten very fast, then you want to put the salt in because it helps preserve it and gives it a longer shelf life when you're making your bread. All right. so once the yeast has dissolved for 10 minutes, I add in all my liquids first. So my eggs and my oil and my honey. And as I said, the honey is easier to get out now is for the simple reason that it is in a container that had the oil in it, so that keeps it from sticking. 
and I add my milk in. I wait a little bit on the milk because it is warmer, so I don't want it to impact the eggs because, you know, eggs can start cooking pretty quickly. <laughs> so once I have mixed together my liquid ingredients, I'm going to add in two cups of the flour, use my whisk to stir that up. And you really want to take about a minute on stirring this first bit of the whole wheat into the liquids because that will help with the bonding process of the oil, the eggs, and everything bonding with that wheat and the yeast to uh, be activated a little bit more. And I, I partly do that. I have these sort of lumps that I can see here now, and as I continue stirring this up, it's going to become a very smooth, very liquidy batter. Uh, so we're getting all these little lumps out. It is becoming smoother. And as soon as I have done that, I'm going to so say stop using my whisk. And I've got more flour. Now I don't dump all of this flour in at once. And in fact, I probably won't use all of this flour. Some of it will be left for when I'm kneading the bread. And that's because you can't tell till you start mixing your dough how much you need that day. That's where humidity plays a role. If there's a lot of moisture in the air, you're going to need a little more flour in your bowl and in the dough than if it's a very dry day. I suspect if I lived in Arizona and it was much drier, <laughs> I'd have quite a different amount of flour that I would be adding in. Now right now this dough is very soft and it's not stiff. To make this type of whole wheat bread, we want a stiff dough, so that's where I know I need to keep adding more flour in. I'm probably today going to be left with about half a cup of flour that doesn't go in out of the six cups, and that flour will be added in when I knead the bread. So now it gets really hard. I kind of switch hands. <laughs> and sometimes I put the bowl lower into the sink so I can, because I'm short. And that means I'm kind of raising my arms in order to mix this dough up. Now I'm getting this very elastic, very thick consistency of the bread. It's not even coming off the spoon easily. And that's what I'm looking for is that sticky dough. I may add just a teeny bit more in here. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this bread and I'm going to put it onto my nonstick silicone surface here. And I'm not kneading or anything. I just want to add the rest of the flour in that's been sitting at the bottom of the bowl. Now at this point, the next thing to do is I'm going to need to clean my bowl and grease it and put my dough into it. Now I cleaned my bowl after I took the dough out and I want to grease it. So I put my hand inside of a baggie <laughs> so I can keep my hand from getting too greasy. Grease the bowl because this will keep the dough from drying out. I'm going to take that dough, I usually just make sure one more time that I've gotten all the flour mixed in well. And I'm going to put the dough in the bowl, but then I'm going to flip it over because that greases the other side of that dough. And I'm going to cover this and let it sit for two hours because of where I'm living, <laughs> low to sea level, and let it rise. Now if you were in a place that was higher up, I'd start checking it after an hour, about every 20 minutes until it has doubled in size. So we look at the size of how much dough is in here and that's probably going to come right up to the top of the bowl by the time it has doubled. And once that happens, we'll be ready for the next step to knead our bread. Now we've allowed this dough to rise for two hours. In some places, if you're up on a mountain, it may only take an hour, but we are at sea level. The closer you are to sea level, the longer it takes for your yeast bread to rise. And once it's risen, the first thing I do is I take my fist and I just punch right into that. And it doesn't really stick to me at this point. It's very elastic. Kind of push that into the center, and then I'm going to put my timer on for 10 minutes. because I have to let this sit for 10 minutes before it's ready to knead. Every step of the process really has to be done delicately because it is a yeast bread and yeast, as I've said before, is the prima donna in bread making, in the drama of the kitchen bread making. And 
everything can be very touchy about it. If you don't let this sit for these 10 minutes, the bread may not rise afterwards. And we have let the dough sit for 10 minutes after punching it down. So it's time to take it out of the bowl and start kneading it. Uh -huh. little, I like using the little nonstick sheets, but sometimes they lift up on me. <laughs> okay, as we knead this, we may need to add in a little more flour. I'm gonna get my flour here. And you can tell that by how sticky it is. It's not sticking to my hands. I did grease my hands ahead of time, but I like to add in flour as I go along. And to knead, you're gonna take the dough, pull it towards yourself, and use the heels of your hands to push down. And you will keep on pushing down and turn it a quarter of a circle. And do the same thing, and it's sticking a little to me, so I'm gonna add a little more of the flour. The kneading does a couple of things. It helps activate that yeast a little bit more, even though we've done a lot of things to activate our yeast. It also helps work out air bubbles that would be in your uh, bread so that you don't have those air pockets and holes in the bread. And you normally need this, so oh, two to five minutes. And I'm going to first cut this in half because I know I have two loaves of bread here. So if I cut it in half, I can have one loaf of bread and I can use the other half actually to make some cinnamon rolls. So let's put this one down and I'm gonna start, continue to knead this. The bread that I'm gonna use for the cinnamon rolls is not going to need as much kneading because it's gonna be rolled out thin. So it's not going to rise in quite the same way as a full loaf of bread has to rise up. That still needs a little more flour on here. And you can put the flour on your board or just onto the dough. But I can feel it's very elastic. See how much I can stretch this apart. And that's the gluten in the flour that causes the elasticity of your bread. And, all right, so now once I have finished kneading my bread, I'm gonna take my pan and I've greased my pan. And I will put the bread into the pan and then I will turn it over so that both sides of the dough gets greased. And that is gonna be ready to go into my oven and bake for 50 minutes. Now the other dough, I said I wanted to make this into cinnamon rolls. You could actually take this and if you just wanted to rip apart a little piece at a time and roll up a ball, three of these together make what we call trinity rolls that you put into a little muffin tin. Or you could shape it and roll it out and cut it into your triangles and butter it to make your crescent rolls. But I'm just gonna make cinnamon rolls today. So I do wanna roll my dough out. And once this dough is rolled out, we're going to butter it and we're gonna spread our brown sugar and cinnamon on it. So now that I have rolled my dough out into a nice rectangle, I'm going to first brush it with butter to make those buttery flavored cinnamon rolls. <laughs> and I just want to make sure I cover the whole area with the butter. And now some people like to mix everything for the filling into one and spread it all on. I like to just do it one layer at a time to make sure I get everything covered. Now once I have spread my butter on, I'm going to take about a third of a cup of brown sugar and a teaspoon or, or so, this is a half teaspoon measuring spoon, so I want a full teaspoon of cinnamon and stir this together. That way the cinnamon gets spread. If you just try to sprinkle the cinnamon on, you may kind of get it a little less uh, sp spreading consistency of having it evenly everywhere. So now I'm going to Put this onto the dough, spread it out everywhere. Continue putting more on as needed. And if you find a third of a cup isn't enough to cover everything, you, it's really up to you as to how much more brown sugar or cinnamon you want to put on. And if you want it extra cinnamony and you don't smell enough, just take your cinnamon and sprinkle more on. And once I've done that, 
I'm adding raisins today. You can add nuts. You can add other dried fruits, however you want to fill your rolls. Raisins are nice and high in iron, so that's a good thing to add in. And a lot of children like raisins. It's a little bit more filling. So now that I've done that, one of the things I like about having a silicone pad is I can lift the pad and that helps me get everything to roll. So then I start uh, rolling that up a little bit. I'm going to roll it all the way. At which point I will take my pan that I've already greased and I'm going to be cutting sections about oh, an inch and a half thick. Put that into my pan, inch to an inch and a half, somewhere in there. Cut each little one. And so it's all rolled. You can see the cinnamon, the raisins as it goes in. Now this does not take as long to bake as the bread. The loaf of bread will take 50 minutes. This takes about 25 minutes, but it also needs a little bit more rising time before it goes in the oven. So I'm going to take this pan once I have everything in here. I'm going to set it on top of a warm spot on the oven and just let it continue to rise for about 15 minutes. And then I will put it in the oven for the last 25 minutes of the baking time of our bread. And that way it'll all come out at once. <laughs> And hopefully we'll have some hungry people ready for nice, warm, glazed cinnamon rolls. Okay, so I have them all in my 9x9 nine nine inch square pan. Use the same amount of dough for this as I did for one loaf of bread. I'm going to take it and cover it with a towel, a clean towel, and let it sit in a warm spot as I said, for about 15 minutes, and then this will go into the oven. Now we're going to make the glaze to put on top of our cinnamon rolls. So I'm just going to take a cup of powdered sugar, add a little bit of milk, add some butter to that, and a little bit of vanilla. This is one of these, you know, you watch people who are not measuring everything. <laughs> I don't tend to measure for the glaze. It's just... Uh, simple enough to do it and make sure you get this consistency you want. When you're mixing it, if you find it's too thick, that means you need to add just a drop or so more of liquid. And if it's too thin, then you probably need to add a little more powdered sugar to thicken it up. So this is getting a little creamier now. And with cinnamon rolls, we tend to use a thicker glaze than with some of our other things. So we just sort of start putting that on and spreading it around. And we can certainly smell the cinnamon in here. <laughs> it's now most of the time at the stores you're going to buy your cinnamon rolls are going to be white flour, but this is the whole wheat, which I always like to use whole wheat. I think it's a little more nutritional for us. And they are ready. Now I did not put the glaze on until that cooled enough, because if you put it on when it's too hot, it would have just melted in and you wouldn't have seen the glaze later when you went to eat it. Okay, well, it's so good to see our bread is out, our rolls are done, and we're ready to slice and enjoy. In fact, I want to go ahead and cut this bread so you can get a look inside. Okay, and we can see the consistency of this bread and see uh, exactly how it looks. It's going to taste really good. You can serve it. There's already honey in it, but a lot of people like to have it with honey or butter. Use it as sandwiches or whatever you want to. Each slice and break bread together with your friends and neighbors. My children used to love having me time things that they would walk in the house on a cold day and the bread would just be coming out of the oven. And they'd sit down and we'd break bread together and what a great time we had of fellowship and talking with one another at that time. Or in the morning if I was up early and had cinnamon rolls ready for them by the time they got up. So enjoy your day and enjoy some fresh baked bread this week.